The physician's tale in the Canterbury Tales occurs in different positions in various editions, reflecting uncertainty among scholars about Chaucer's intended arrangement. Now, the tale begins without a prologue. The physician says the tale comes from Livy, the first century Roman historian. A knight of noble birth named Virginius had a beautiful and virtuous daughter, Virginia. One morning, Virginia goes into town with her mother. A judge named Appius sees and desires her. He hires a man named Claudius to accuse Virginius of stealing his young female servant and passing her off as his daughter. The judge rules in favor of Claudius and orders Virginia to be taken from Virginius' home. Rather than give her over to the judge, Virginius plots with his daughter and they agree she must be killed to preserve her virtue. Virginius cuts off Virginia's head and he gives it to the judge who orders that Virginius be hanged. The men of the town rise up and throw Appius into jail. They send Claudius into exile and hang anyone else who was involved in the plot. The physician ends by saying, forsake your sins before your sins forsake you. Harry Bailey points out the gifts of fate, such as great beauty, sometimes least befriend us. Then he says he needs someone to tell a more cheerful story and calls on the partner. Some members of the company demand a tale with a moral. The partner says he will think of a good tale while he has a drink. In the physician's tale, Virginia, the beautiful and obedient young woman whose virtue is of more importance than her life, meets the corrupt and lecherous judge who's similar to other men of high rank who prey on the helpless. Virginius is an example of a noble whose sense of righteousness trumps more sentimental human emotions. The main ethical conflict of the tale provides readers with insights into the attitudes and values of the Middle Ages. A daughter at this time was essentially the property of her father until she wed her husband. The husband would then become both authority and protector. Appius's plan disrupts this order. He does not ask for Virginia's hand in marriage, but simply wants her for sex. Going along with Appius' scheme would be disastrous for the aptly named Virginia. Medieval society placed high value on the chastity of unmarried women. Stories of female saints who committed suicide to avoid rape were very popular at the time. In this context, Virginius' solution has a certain logic. 